Maria Carmen Gonzalez Valerio was born in Madrid on March 14, 1930, the second of five children. When she was just born, she became gravely ill and was given emergency baptism and given the name Maria of Carmel, Maria Carmen of the Sacred Heart. Thanks to a friend of the family, the papal nuncio in Spain, Maria Carmen received confirmation at age two. Since her infancy, Maria Carmen had a generous heart. One day a beggar came to the door of the house. The little girl opened the door and gave him all the money she had. And then she said, Now ring the doorbell again so that my mother can give you something. Knowing that her mother often gave clothing to the poor. She used to give her dolls courses on spirituality and show them how to pray and how to make the sign of the cross. At age four or five, she also memorized the Litany of Loreto, the Litany of the Blessed Virgin Mary, in Latin. She kept a book of Acts, that is, reminders of daily virtues to practice and the obligations of each day, obedience, mortification, class, study, the rosary, daily prayer, etc. Her mother said, One day, Maria Carmen was to go to a birthday party with other children. I had put on her a little sleeveless, low-neck dress, but I realized that she had put a jacket over it. She said to me, crying, that she would not go out with this dress. My mother, Maria Carmen's grandmother, who witnessed the scene, took me aside and told me that I had not the right to suppress her God-given sense of modesty and that I would be accountable to God for the education that I gave to her. So Maria Carmen went to the party with her jacket on. At the age of six, on June 27, 1936, she made her first Holy Communion. The date was advanced upon her mother's request, who said later, I was convinced then that Spain, and especially our family, would go through difficult times. One could see religious persecution brewing, and I wanted Maria Carmen to make her first Holy Communion before that should happen. The Spanish Civil War began only days later. When she was only six years old, her life radically changed. You see, Spain during that time was under a tremendous persecution. Assassinations of prominent Catholics were just a few of the rewards for keeping the true faith in Spain at that time. Churches and convents were ransacked and burned. 7,000 priests and clergy were killed in Spain. The churches in the cities of Malagda, Cordoba, Murca, Cadiz, Palma del Rio, Granada, and Cartagena, all the churches in these cities were desecrated. In Yecla alone, a city with 15 Catholic churches, every one of them was destroyed, leaving no churches in that city. The martyrs were counted by the thousands. Yet even in this persecution, Maria Carmen would sometimes go out and distribute Catholic literature to passers-by. On August 15th, 1936, the feast of the taking up of Our Lady into Heaven, Maria Carmen's father, a prominent Catholic in Spain during the Spanish Civil War, was unjustly taken up to jail. When he was let off to prison, he told his wife, quote, When the children are older, tell them that their father fought for and gave his life for God so that they could live in a Catholic Spain where the crucifix presides in every school. Close quote. Days later, he was executed. Just a parenthetical note here. In a persecution, Maria Carmen's father died for the public display of the crucifix. What would he say about Catholics in a free state afraid to even make the sign of the cross in public. How did Maria Carmen react to the news of her father's murder? Maria Carmen's aunt describes her reaction, quote, Each and every day, the girl prayed the rosary for the conversion of her father's murderers. Close quote. The conversion of the leader of the atrocities against the church, the president of the Spanish Republic, Manuel Azaña, was of particular concern to Maria Carmen. Once she asked her mother, will Azaña go to hell? To which her mother responded, if we pray for him, he won't. 
On Holy Thursday, April 6, 1939, in the Church of the Good Shepherd, Maria Carmen made her offering to God. After receiving Holy Communion, she covered her face with her hands, remaining kneeling as she made her thanksgiving. During this time, she made her offering. Soon after, she fell ill with scarlet fever and developed an ear infection. She then developed blood poisoning and was diagnosed with cancer. Gangrenous wounds also developed, all of which she suffered with great patience and without complaint, even when the things done to help her were actually making her more uncomfortable. Her mother said to her, Maria Carmen, ask the child Jesus to heal you from your wounds. She replied, No, Mommy, I will not ask that. I want his will to be done. On July 17th, 1939, Maria Carmen sat up in bed, which she hadn't been able to do for a long time, and she said with joy, Today I'm going to die. Today I'm going to heaven. She told those around her bedside to love one another. At about three o'clock in the afternoon, the hour of great mercy, Maria Carmen pronounced her last words, Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, may I breathe forth my spirit in peace with you. She died just months after she made her offering, the offering, that is, of her life for the conversion of the president, Manuel Azania, the man responsible for the murder of her own father at the age of nine years old, venerable Maria Carmen Gonzalez died. Just think of the powerful example that a Catholic father can have. Think of the importance of receiving the sacraments early. The power of forgiveness, charity, even to those who we don't think deserve it. Remember our Lord said, if you forgive men their offenses, your heavenly Father will forgive you also your offenses. But if you will not forgive men, neither will your Father forgive you your offenses. Every one of us has someone to forgive and someone that we have to ask forgiveness of. Every one of us should never let a day end with unforgiveness in our heart. Our Lord is just waiting to offer it to us. We have to turn away from our sin, be faithful to the good God who loves us so much. If we're having difficulty forgiving someone, think of Venerable Maria Carmen. How hard do you think it was for this little girl at age six years old to lose her father and then spend the next three years praying for her father's murderers? If she can forgive, why can't we forgive? Every one of us has someone to forgive. We're finding it difficult to forgive. Ask for Venerable Maria Carmen's intercession. Her prayers, by the way, are very, very powerful. No father in heaven can refuse a little girl kind of crawling up on his lap and asking things of him. There's a sequel to Venerable Maria Carmen's story. When the government in Spain changed, President Manuel Azaña was exiled to France. In the fall of 1940, he became seriously sick, and as he lay dying, the man responsible for the brutal persecution of the church, the man responsible for the death of Maria Carmen's father, the man for whose conversion Maria Carmen had offered herself, The man who was responsible for the death of thousands of priests himself asked for a priest. Now recall that Maria Carmen's father died for the love of the public display of the crucifix. The bishop of the Diocese of Tarbes and Lourdes, who came to President Azania's deathbed when he asked for a priest, relates what happened next. At Azania's request, quote, I presented a crucifix to him. His eyes, wet with tears, gazed for a long time on Christ crucified. Then he took the crucifix from my hands, kissed it tenderly three times, saying each time, O Jesus, pity and mercy. O Jesus, 
pity and mercy. Oh, Jesus, pity and mercy. The former persecutor of the church in Spain received the sacrament of penance and died in the love of God, filled with the hope of seeing God in eternity. This is a tremendous grace. St. Alphonsus says that usually the way man lives, so he dies. What this president had no idea of was that a little girl of nine years old had offered her life for his conversion. All of us have someone to forgive. All of us have someone to forgive. And someone to ask forgiveness of. Nothing is impossible to God. Ask for the supernatural grace to forgive and to be forgiven. Ask for the intercession of Venerable Maria Carmen Gonzalez, who loved charity more than the dislike of her own father's murderers. May God bless you, and may Our Lady of the Rosary pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.